Hey everybody, uh, out here at Glendo Reservoir. Uh, I'm actually on vacation, but it seemed like a pretty good time to just go ahead and, and record just a few thoughts for our Wednesday class on uh, uh, words of Jesus, red letters for a hurting world. The water is a little bit, well, quite a bit choppy out here, uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to read this uh, okay and you'll be able to hear without all of the wind. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn over to Anthony and he's going to read Luke chapter 5 verses 1 through 11 for us. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people crowding around him listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simeon. And asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simeon, Put it out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. For a catch. Simeon answered, Master, we've worked hard all day and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they ha had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled the boat, both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simeon, Simeon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am, sin I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at, all at the catch of which they had taken. And so when James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simeon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simeon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch, catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. So I'm kind of thinking maybe we should have read the passage about Jesus calming the storm with how wavy it is. I actually thought I might want to try fishing while Anthony records for me, but uh, I'm pretty sure I would topple both of us into the water. So, um, yeah, Luke 5 is when Jesus calls uh, Peter and James and John, uh, a story that we all know really well. I was just kind of thinking about this passage as uh, we were fishing last night and yesterday morning and the night before. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I really think that there's maybe more here than we tend to uh, give credit to. Um, but I just wanted to kind of share a few little thoughts about this passage. Um, obviously, it's ironic that you have Jesus, who is a religious teacher, telling a fisherman, hey, it's now is the right time to fish. Um, I, I, I would never dream of going to Dan Jones and telling him how to fix my suburban or going to, uh, you know, uh, Chad uh, Chandler and telling him how to build a shed or something like that. I have no business doing that. And so it's pretty ironic that Jesus would tell Peter. And it's, it's really interesting, though, that Peter actually listens. Um, if I had the experience fishing that Peter did, I would probably be more likely to just say, Jesus, um, it's not the right time. Why don't you stay in your lane? I'll stay in my lane. Uh, but you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to fishing. But Jesus, uh, or Peter, actually does what um, he actually does what Jesus tells him to do, which I do think is is interesting. It's it's not a it's not a practical thing to do, right? Uh, Peter knew that it was also very inconvenient. I wonder if Peter did it just because he was curious. Uh, I don't know. And yet, nevertheless, Peter decides he's still going. To go out uh, into the deep water he says because you say so and I think there's a lot into that you know sometimes we might not understand why God wants us to do some certain thing or why we might be feeling some calling or some pull toward a particular ministry uh, or, or some particular work and sometimes we just need to be able to have the bravery and the courage to say okay Jesus because you say so, I will go and, and, and I'll go into the deep water. Uh, 
as soon as they start pulling up all of those fish and then James and John's boat comes over to help them, Peter realizes this is, this is not an ordinary day. This is something super natural. It's not even just a, a, a coincidence, um, but this is something that is super natural. His first instinct, I think it's very telling, Peter's first instinct is to get to his knees and say, um, depart from me. I, I am, I'm a sinner. I have no business being near somebody so holy and righteous. Uh, I think that, I think that Peter probably knew his Old Testament pretty well, right? Sinners obviously should be afraid in the presence of God. Um, here you have um, a up-and-coming, well-known rabbi. And to be a disciple of a rabbi it is a very respectable position in their society, right? The most famous people in their society are religious people. Um, but he immediately humbles himself uh, instead of saying, Oh, look, um, can I be your disciple? Please, please, here's my resume. Here's my qualifications. Let me list out my strengths for you. That's what we do in, in our society today. I've been a part of several, um, you know, preacher search committees, or in my own personal life, being on the um, the interviewee's chair uh, and trying to say, "Well, here are my qualifications for doing ministry." Peter does the opposite. He says, "I depart from me. I am a sinner. I, I don't." Um, I don't deserve to be around somebody as holy and, and righteous as you. Um, but I think that that's an important thing because he recognizes, or at least he knows in his heart somehow, that God does not need him. Admitting his inability and confessing his sin, that was the only prerequisite to, uh, uh, that was the only thing needed on his resume, was confession uh, and humility. You know, it takes humility to recognize that you need to be a learner. Disciples are lifelong learners of Christ. When it comes to being a fisher of men, uh, it is called fishing. It, it's not called catching. There are no guarantees. And yet we are simply called to go to the deep water and put our net down. Um, as another uh, account would say, putting our net down on the other side. It might seem uh, anti-intuitive, and yet uh, sometimes that's how work in the kingdom is. We're simply called to go do whether or not there's any kind of uh, guarantee uh, that, that something might happen because of that. Um, the miracle... I think that is happening here was not only the sheer number of fish that was pulling both of the uh, boats down to where they began to sink. Uh, it, it was also the time of day. Um, it, everything about this event is unexpected, not simply the quantity of fish that they were able to get. Sometimes we need to allow ourselves to go into the unexpected situations and simply do what Christ calls us to do. Um, when we feel like we're being called to uh, a certain ministry, like I said before, uh, it might not be this amazing number of people that we catch and are able to convince that, uh, you know, to begin walking with Christ or something. Um, some people are perch and some are blue marlins. <laughs> Uh, you might only catch a single blue marlin in your whole life. That doesn't mean that that one fish is any less important than the uh, maybe you have one trip where you were able to catch thousands of fish. Where I grew up, there's often this emphasis in getting big, gigantic numbers, you know, more so than would fit in two boats. And I think that it's important to remember maybe that work. Um, maybe God has one single person in mind uh, that, that he wants you to reach. And maybe it might not even be this amazing conversion story, but maybe you are called to go say one single positive thing, um, to, be, to have one positive interaction or conversation with a particular person on that day 
don't underestimate what God can do with that interaction and don't belittle it because oh well I you know it wasn't baptizing a thousand people in Africa well so what God can do amazing things through that one conversation and if there's anything that I think the New Testament makes clear in the Old Testament it's that God tends to do the most amazing things with small seemingly insignificant people or insignificant interactions uh, and that kind of thing and so uh, don't ever be discouraged because you don't have these huge, massive, gigantic numbers. Whether you're talking about a church ministry or conversions in your own uh, workplace, people you're trying to talk to, maybe it's just a single positive conversation that God is calling you to. And never underestimate the impact that that can have. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to leave you all with, are you only casting your net in the places where it's expected? Um, what does it look like in your own life personally to set out to deep water, uh, to let the nets down? Perhaps you've sensed some calling or some, some change that you feel like God is calling you to make in your own life. Um, and either it's very uncomfortable or it goes against modern day intuitions and, and sensibilities, right? Um, Peter and James and John's fishing company accountant probably didn't like seeing their notes wadded up in their boats and their boats not in the water. Uh, that's not very lucrative. And yet they were compelled and, and they felt like what they needed to do was to follow Christ. Um, and so I think that we've got to ask ourselves some difficult questions. Um, if there's something that you feel like God has been calling you to, that maybe is is very inconvenient or any number of things, perhaps we're simply called to say, all right, Jesus, because you say so, I will go into the deep water. I will do what is unexpected um, and not, not expect maybe some miraculous catch of fish, but simply expect that through a single conversation or interaction that God will be able to work through our faithfulness in saying, all right, because you say so. Um, let's let's pray. God, I thank you so much for uh, just the opportunity to, um, to be a fisher of men. I pray, Lord, that we will always recognize the impact that you can have in a single conversation. Uh, thank you for Peter's willingness and the disciples' willingness, and I pray that our own lives reflect their humility, um, and their response to the call that you have uh, every single day on our own lives as well. And it's through Christ.